Okay, welcome to the webinar, Bitrix 24, sell more with sites. So who are we? I'm Damian Edwards, Commercial Manager of Bitrix 24 Partners Interface, and with me I've got our Support Manager, Andy Naylor. Hi guys, if you've got any questions throughout the webinar, just put them in the box provided, and we'll have a Q&A session at the end of each section. So we're located in Sheffield in the UK, and we have an office in New York and Dubai. We manage all pre-sales support, which includes uh, providing you with a demo, uh, advising you on which, which edition is best for your business, full implementation service, including training uh, and customization. Bitrix is available as a cloud or self-hosted. If you choose the self-hosted solution, we can install that on your server or pro provide a hosting solution for you on our data center, and we provide a telephone support service. So in this Bitrix 24, a suite of in excess of 35 tools for managing your business. Uh, over 3 million organizations use Bitrix, one, one uh, edition of Bitrix available as a cloud on a monthly subscription or a self-hosted solution, which is essentially a lifetime, one-off lifetime cost. So why use Bitrix24 for your public website? Well, doesn't require any coding at all, or drag and drop technology. Host it on your own domain or a Bitrix domain. Uh, we're gonna have a look at how you can integrate with tools, uh, Bitrix24 tools, marketing tools. It is, of course, responsive to uh, uh, different devices, so uh, able to uh, access, users are able to access on, their, on a desktop, on a laptop, on a tablet, on a mobile, etc. And, of course, full SEO package including included, um, and there are tools to allow you to to report on success of your websites and landing pages. We're gonna have a look at two or, two or three different sections today. First one, of course, is setting up your site from the beginning. How um, we're gonna have a look at a number of different design templates which you can choose from. How you then uh, customize that design, that template, chosen template. Uh, adding additional pages and menus, uh, adding Bitrix24 widgets, very important to get uh, people to act act on your promotional offers on your website. How you can risk, how you can test that website as well. Particularly, you particularly important to test across multiple devices, and then how you go to launch launch that website. Pass you on to what Andy is going to set up a site for us and show you those. Show you those uh, show you those items. Yeah, certainly. So Damien mentioned a moment ago just about there's a couple of different versions of Bitrix. So just to point out that the site is available on both the cloud package and it's also available on the self-hosted now as well. So for those of you that are quite new to Bitrix, you'll see in the left-hand side that the Sites menu item is here. So we click on Sites. So this is the location where we're going to start to create a, a new site. And we've got a couple of examples that I'll show you of how we can set up different kinds of sites within Bitrix. So we'll first set up a new site and we'll have a look at what Bitrix provides as a range of different templates. So it's completely up to you if you want to start with a completely blank template. So this will allow you to create your own design using the blocks that we're going to explore in a minute. Uh, but you may find a design here that's relevant to your industry. So we have a, everything from a web agency through to real estate, through to photography. So there are quite a lot of different designs. And I would probably recommend, first of all, just taking a look. Once you click into one, then it will pull up a, a preview of that specific template. So 
we'll start off with creating a, a web agency website here. So you can see this is the particular template for this uh, kind of website. Now, even though you not, may not be a web agency, you may find that the design still works for yourself. So it doesn't really matter if this, for example, this is a web agency, but you like the look of this one. You can change every different element of the website to be reflective of your business. So the first thing that you should do, click on the web agency and then specify your, basically your default color for your website. So if I was to select a light blue, for example, You'll see the initial design change. So you can see in the menu, everything from links through to icons, through to underlining of different elements. And also the, the website widget tools uh, in the bottom right hand corner change color to match your uh, default color theme. So that's the starting point. And once we create the site, if we click on create, it's as simple as that to get you started. So it will add uh, the site here. So once it loads up, you can see the default theme that we've just loaded up. And the first thing that you should probably look at really is the settings for configuring your site. So if we click into the top, you can see there's a settings uh, link and we're going to look at site preferences. And there's a number of things that you should need to, to set in here. First of all, uh, you can give your website a name. So let's call this, uh, let's call this interface web agency. And the reason why we would give it a name is it has no relevance in terms of the actual optimization or anything uh, of the website. But what Bitrix allow you to do, they allow you to create multiple sites. You can create an unlimited amount of sites, and it's definitely good to differentiate between the types of sites that you create. I guess that if you're on a professional package, then you, you, you've you got unlimited hosting space as well. So I think that's something to consider. Yeah, package you're on. Yeah, yeah. certainly. Uh, so you, you should definitely label your own site. And then the second thing that you need to do is you need to determine whether you want to host this site on a domain of your choice. So for the, the examples that we have set up, we have uh, added them to a subdomain of our domain. So if I just click on the tabs that are open here, you can see that we have set up a Bitrix site here under cakeshop.interface.com. And we've also set one up as landing.interface.com. So you don't have to use the default site address. There's no charges at all in, included in this. You would just need to own the domain that you want to have your website on. And if you click on the pencil icon here, it actually shows you how to, to set it up. So a standard Bitrix will provide you with a default URL, so you can see here B24. It's not that pretty. I mean, you could change that if you wanted to, if it is available. Uh, if you wanted to use your own domain, so for example, we I mentioned a moment ago have uh, cakeshop.interface.com, we could actually have webagency.com. If we owned that particular domain, we would need to own it. You cannot. Uh, you cannot have a domain that you don't own. Or if you wanted it on, if we wanted it on webagency.interface.com, then you can see here that it provides you with the DNS uh, options for your domain. Now you will need to, wherever you bought your domain from and registered your domain, they will have the option to update the DNS settings within that control panel of your domain registrar. So you would need to go into the DNS, create a CNAME record with the value for the host as whatever you decide to call your own domain. And then you would need to put the value in there. It is pretty straightforward. The fields that you see in your domain registrar will be replicated here. So you can just uh, update it when you want. Now, if you're not launching it straight away, I would probably stick with the Bitrix subdomain to start off with just so you can develop 
the site and, and design the site however you wish. And then at a later point, you can always come back to site settings and update it to your own domain. So then it will you'll be launching it to live. So we'll leave it at that as the, at the moment and click on continue. And then we move down into some uh, different settings as well. So we're going to look at what Bitrix provide for website widgets. But we can see here that we have one available within our uh, demonstration site on Bitrix and it, have a, it has a CRM form and a callback widget assigned to it. So we'll come back to this because we're going to show you how you can set up all your wid widgets and configure the live chat, the forms and the callback uh, forms as well. So we'll come back to this option. If we have a look at, uh, you can see the colour and themes, they're pretty standard. And then if we scroll down, you can change the favicon. So the favicon is referring to the icon you can see in the tab at the top here. It will always default to 24. And then one of the, one of the more important elements, and we'll, we'll touch upon it when we go into the reporting side of uh, Bitrix sites, is that you can actually assign your Google Analytics ID to the, the site itself. And we would always recommend doing this. It's free. Google Analytics is free and it provides you with a comprehensive tool to track your visitors, track what your visitors are doing on your site and where they've come from. So this is essential, we would say, to assign your uh, Google Analytics ID. And then the rest of this is pretty straightforward. I would def leave everything as default, which is the template has been set. And then you can add your own custom HTML if you wanted to, and also remove the powered by Bitrix. So that is initially the site setup and the site uh, settings that you need to configure. And if we click on save, then we have saved the site settings for uh, this particular site. Now, now that you've set up those settings, the next thing that you need to do is just have a look at the page settings. So we've set them for the whole site. And now what we can do is set some page preferences. And the reason for doing this is more to the point of a uh, search engine optimization. So if we click on page meta tags, if we just click on this checkbox, what it's going to do is going to allow you to provide a title tag, which is essential for SEO. It's going to provide you with a meta description and you can add your keywords to this particular page as well. Now, we're going to explore a couple of different types of sites that Bitrix offers. You can create a landing page, so it's just going to be a one page website, or you can create a multi page website. So you can have multiple pages uh, on your Bitrix sites. So you can add, you can add the optimization uh, on here. I just I was just wondering about crawling. So we've got an option for crawling here. Can can we? So so as you've mentioned, we have a uh, uh, we have two sites we've set up. We've got Cake Shop and we've got Landing. So this is an example of a landing page. You probably wouldn't want a landing page to be indexed in Google. So presumably under crawling, you can you can deselect that. Yeah, so you would basically add to search engine, okay. you would then deselect that if you're creating a landing page for a marketing campaign, so, for example. So it looks like this is selected by default, so you need to have that on if you want to be indexed in Google, but then there are, there are instances on a landing page where you want to turn, turn that off. Yeah, yeah and, and again, probably while you're, you're setting up your site, you probably want that unchecked again initially, yeah. so, you're, so your developing pages don't get indexed on search engines. So I think the rest of the fields on here are quite self-explanatory, but I just wanted to point out just with regards to the optimization, because it is it is a very important aspect of setting up a site within Bitrix. So now that we've looked at the settings on here, click on save. We're going to go back to the actual uh, site itself. So you can see, obviously, Bitrix populates each individual element. So they've got a background picture and then you've got some text here. Now, it's very easy to be able to configure your own design. So we'll have a look now at just the ability to edit uh, the existing blocks within your site. So each section you can see in here has its own, when you hover over a section, it has its own edit button. And again, 
so you can see we can edit each section individually. So let's let's take a look at this particular section on here. And if we were to click on the, first of all the design element, this is where we can maybe if you, these are all pre-configured, and I, I probably wouldn't mess around with these too much because the, the actual site itself is designed to look uh, very nice in the terms of the way that the padding has already been set. So the design settings are preset, and I would probably leave these as much as possible. What you want to be actually looking at is the edit element. So if you click on the edit, then what we can do is we can click on the pencil icon here. And you can see here that we can see the title text, the icons, the, the actual body of the text, the read more links, you can see in the background, this is the read more link, and then the background image. So let's just close this down and let's have a look what this is referring to. So you can see the icon, the title, and the text and the link as well. So it's really straightforward, it's really simple to be able to edit these. It's just a click and uh, an edit, and we can go into each one of these and, and do exactly the same on there. So that's the case for each of the sections on here. It's just gonna be a case of going in, clicking on edit, and you can see here the left column of the page, the center column, center column title, and then we have the other block elements on here. So does Bitrix have a library of images? If I want to change this image, there's there's a few. I, I, Bitrix provides a range of free to use images on each of these things. But I think we go if we click into uh, if we click into edit, we could probably we could probably switch it from uh, so I can probably switch it from another another theme. Um, so you can see here for, for Bitrix use uh, Unsplash. So Unsplash provides you with some royalty free stock images. So that's what's gonna be used on, in terms of, you can see in the background that these images are sliding. It may be that you don't want these kind of images. If you don't want these images, then we can just click on upload and you can upload from your computer. It does tell you in each of the different elements the recommended image size. So if you've got a photo edit, if you've got an editor like Photoshop or you can go online now and resize your images to the specific dimensions, then it's just a case of being able to upload from your computer. So it's really, really simple to be able to edit the pre-existing design. And again, if you ever want to change the colors of the background or anything like that, then you are gonna to need to click into the design element of here. If you want to move things up, it's just a case of clicking on the up and down arrows. So if you wanted uh, the advantages to be moved up, you can do that pretty, pretty easily. So that's how we configure the existing design that Bitrix provide. Now we should just have a take a look at how we can uh, add new content and also uh, add pages. Because as standard, Bitrix will provide you with a one page template here. So you can see that we have, if I was to click on uh, the work processes, it's gonna scroll down to the work processes section, which is here. So it's, it basically adds as a, what we can do, if we click on preview, let's just have a look at what this looks like. So if I was to click on work processes, it slides down the page. Again, with team, it slides down the page. So you can create a, a one-page site if you wanted to. If you wanted to create a multiple-page site, then all you would need to do is, if we just go into here and if we just, we're an interface web agency. If we just click on pages, what we can do is add a new page. So it may be that we want a page called, I don't know, inquiries. So let's do that. So let's click on, click on new page. And we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep the agency theme and we'll keep the blue theme here and we'll click on create. So you can now see that we have a exactly the same mirror of page. So what we can do here is we can add whatever we want. So let's let's remove some of these elements on here to make it look a little bit different. So we'll add get in touch. In fact, we'll we'll, we'll remove quite a few of these elements. 
And what you can actually do as well is you can, in fact, let's just, Let's just add a new block on here. So what we're going to do is we'll, we'll we'll keep this want to join our team. Maybe we'll have this as I don't know a an, a, uh, a recruitment page, and we can add a new block. If we click on add block, then Bitrix comes with uh, quite a lot of preset uh, components. So you can see on the left hand side we have cover. So it may be that you want to create a new slide at the top. It has quite a lot of pre-built uh, options on here. We can have text, so again, a lot of different styles. And when we add these, it's a simple, again, as Demi mentioned at the beginning, there's no coding required for this. It is literally just a simple uh, drag and drop. So if we were to, uh, for example, let's create a prices section and we can include prices here. So you can see really it's really it's designed very nicely. It's going to fit in with what you're what you're trying to create in here. And I think the only thing that you would need to do is if you click it back into settings and because we've created a new page, we can click on page preferences and let's just call this I don't know pricing just for an example. So if we click on save and then what we can do, probably we want to change this to our pricing. And then again, we can we can include anything we want in here. So let's just leave it as this for the moment and click on uh, publish. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the pages and we're going to look at our agency page. So you can see here that we may want to then, if we click on here to edit, what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, pricing. And we'll take this out. And what we can do is click on the select and actually say link to page. And we're going to have it click to. This is why we should really name the pages, because mm -hmm. this is what we were referring to earlier. Mm -hmm. We could actually go back into that page and click and make sure we call that page pricing. So if we click on save, what that will do then, click, and if we click on publish, you'll be able to see pricing. We click on there and it takes us to our pricing page. So you can see how you can start building up your website into quite a detailed, uh, detail and quite complex website. It's not a case if you just have to have one page, you can create a series of different blocks. And just going back to the point of why you'd want to do this. So we have a couple of examples. Let's just go uh, back to Bitrix in this case on here. And let's show you a couple of examples of what we have. So we have a landing page here. You can see it's got no menu item at all. What we've done is we've added some widgets in, which we're going to show you a little bit in a little bit. And it just has some ways of capturing data. And what you can do with this, and especially we've, used, we've seen it a lot with our clients, is that now that CRM marketing tools come out, we can actually uh, send people via their email marketing campaign straight to these landing pages to provide the data that we want. So this, this is an example of a way of collecting and capturing the data. So we've got on that page, we've got at least three call to action. We've got this form here. We've got the, the chat widget over here. Users can can select any of those, um, fill out a form, or they can request a callback or have a live chat. And then, as they scroll down and read more information, towards the bottom we've got a reminder here, so that we've duplicated the form. So, and that's the tends to be on a landing page. Lots of different calls to action, so that you you, you capture those inquiries in a form or a chat or something. Yeah, definitely. And when we look at how we can integrate the, the widgets that come with Bitrix, these forms will actually feed information back into your CRM. So these forms are going to create leads in your system. They can create a new contacts. They can update contact information. It's, they are really, really powerful the way that these sites integrate with the Bitrix CRM. So that's an example of a landing page. If you click onto our full full website here, you can see that we've created and styled up a, 
a demo cake shop, for example, and you can see how it, it aesthetically looks very good. You click on inquiry and it's a multiple page uh, website where again, all these are standard blocks. You can change colors and everything as such like that. So that's how we can add pages and content and action and, and blocks within the actual uh, sites themselves. Now let's just have a look at how we can add Bitrix 24 uh, widgets. You know that's so that so looking at that that has every single that has all the functionality you'd have on WordPress by by the looks of it, um, uh, um, and and it's still only in beta, so expect more features to come. But I think that the key if you're if you're using Bitrix already, especially on the CRM side, then you've got all this we're going to look at next. You've got all this integration with the CRM, so it makes a lot of sense to host your website using Bitrix, using Bitrix sites. If, you, if you're not using Bitrix, you know, it's still, it's available as a free of charge, free of charge tool. And yeah, it's easy to use as WordPress and, you know, it seems to be as feature rich as WordPress as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly that. And I think it's easier than WordPress, to be honest, because this site builder that we've got here is actually every, every component is available once we click on the new ad block. So what we were mentioning there is the ability to, First of all, we're going to look at how to add your CRM forms onto uh, Bitrix. So you can see here, if we add a block, and we'll just replicate what we've created here. So let's click on Add Block. And then you can see on the left-hand side that we have CRM form. So you can style this however you wish. The one that we've got in the background here is actually this one here. So let's just add that onto the system here so you can see looks really nice it's uh comes as standard as it is what we might want to do is click on not the design sorry you might want to click on edit and we can upload a file for the background from our computer so let's just take a look at uh i think i think we had a we might not have it on here so we'll leave that, that as it is but what you can do is you can change that quite easily by uploading. And then we can change the content on here. So we can say, I don't know, give it some text here and then update your contact information. But this, more importantly, this form that you see here has been created inside Bitrix. And in this, we're going to show you in a little bit more in a little bit in our second section with regards to integration of how we can create these forms and they become available within inside Bitrix. So that's how we could integrate forms. And then finally, just on the integration side of things is the settings. If we go back to site preferences, I mentioned earlier with regards to uh, the website widgets, Damien pointed it out when we were on a landing page here. And what we're referring to is these website widgets here. So we've got live chat, we've got callbacks, and we've got an inquiry form. And again, we're going to show you how you create them inside Bitrix uh, in a little moment. So that's how we integrate the website widgets. The final point to mention just whilst we're on the, the setup of the sites is the importance of displaying these websites on different devices. So you can see at the top here, so if we just click out of here, you can see at the moment what we're doing is viewing this website on a laptop or a desktop version. What we can actually do is now switch to what it will look like on an iPad. So you can see here if we wanted to look at the different views on an iPad. And then we can have a look also as what it, what it looks like on a mobile. So you can see we have a nice menu. We have the logo. And the good thing is with all the templates that are inside Bitrix, they are all responsive. So you don't need to worry about any of the, the actual coding behind making these websites responsive. These are gonna transform based on whatever device that they're going on. So I think with just, just with regards to that testing, it is gonna, everything is gonna look really nice. You can still edit and move things and change things whilst you're in here. So 
you can just tweak and make sure that everything looks right on the iPads and the mobiles. So this is why we have themes then, so they're tested on, on multiple devices. As we've seen, as we've seen there, they work, they work well on all those different devices. Of course, you can, you can use the blank template and you can use your own, add your own code, but uh, if you're not experienced with that, you, you, you should be aware that, you know, that people are accessing these sites on different, with different devices test it make sure you test it on all those different different devices first of all yeah that's it and then the finally the first thing that you should uh, the final thing that you should do once you're happy with everything click publish and your website will be published but always remember that in site preferences you can have whatever domain you want as long as you point the dns once you then make that publish then one of the final points to note on this is that Bittrex will automatically provide you with an SSL on your website for free, completely free of charge. Bittrex use Let's Encrypt, which is a very secure method of securing your website. And that also improves the, uh, the optimization of your uh, website. So for those of you that don't know what an SSL is, it just basically that you can see that this is on HTTPS, which means that the website is securely configured. Uh, and again, it's completely free of charge, so you don't need to, if you were to create your own website, you would need to really be paying in the, in the region of around 30 to, to $60 to buy one of these SSL certificates. Yeah. With yeah. Bittrex, it's completely free. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's secure, it's secure, but you don't, even though this isn't an e-commerce, there's no, there's no payments um, happening on this site. You still need to have an SSL on a website these days. Google won't index your site or they'll index it quite quite low in their rankings if, if you don't have an SSL. So it's, um, it, is man it is mandatory really for all, all websites these days. Yeah, certainly. So, so that's, that's the Bittrex sites as such on the builder and how we, so we've looked at how we have uh, chose, chosen, chosen the design configured the site settings. We've had a look at configuring your design by the editing the existing action blocks, the adding content and the reasons for adding new pages as well. Had a look at the widgets and we've had a look at the responsive nature of the sites. Yeah. So if anybody's got any questions, then... Okay. Yeah, we had a question come in. Can I add my own HTML to the site? I think we mentioned that you can. How do we do that? Yeah, I think if you go to the site, let's just go back into this particular site here. And once it loads up, so Bittrex does allow you to add your own HTML. You may want to embed different kinds of forms in your site. You may want to use uh, SurveyMonkey or something like that. Click on edit, uh, sorry, click on add block, sorry. Scroll down to where it says other, and then you can see here we can add a HTML code block and that will allow you to copy and paste any HTML that you need in uh, your particular website. Okay, uh, I think we covered this as well. Can I keep my site hidden until it's ready to go live? Um, I don't want, yeah, essentially they don't want it to be indexed uh, in by the search engines. I think we, we, we mentioned that, that you, if you are hosting it on your own domain, you, you wouldn't point you wouldn't set that up until the end. So you'll use the temporary domain that Bittrex provides you with, and then you would point your domain when you're ready to go. Um, you, you can also untick the box that says, um, uh, allow search engines to find my website. Um, uh, so yeah, that would be how you would do that. So I've got a question come through. How can I add specific metadata words to increase position in the indexes? So I did touch upon that when we were having a look at the actual uh, site settings. So as such, you what you should do is click on settings, click on page preferences, and then what you need to do is just click on more. So you need to do this for each page that you create. You click on add edit meta tags. You can add the meta title, the meta description, and the meta keywords. I think the, ti I think the title can be equally as important as the keywords here for, for SEO purposes. So consider what you, you, you write in all of these, these boxes. So how do you fix it if you get error messages? Is there any way to debug? So 
I've never I've not seen in that I've set up quite a few sites I've never seen any error messages but if you could maybe if you are receiving an error message please let us know yeah. and we can take a look it, it, it is a, it is it is a product it is a, it's still in beta so there are some updates coming through for it so if you've had a if you've had an error that will be you know submit the ticket to Bitrix contact us we'll submit the ticket to Bitrix for you um, and you know that'll get fixed. Um, we've not seen too many problems with it, but let's say it's in beta, so you know there's going to be a lot of improvements coming through. So on the so just got a question: Is it is this available on the free version of Bitrix? So if you're on the free version, you are allowed to have one site, so you can only create one, uh, and then it goes up to. Uh, on the let me just check the plus version you have five the ability to add five sites if you're on the standard version you can have 10 sites and if you're on the professional or the self-hosted then you can have unlimited sites so that's that's one site on the free version did you say yeah that's yeah. one site on so the free i mean version. most people only need one site so you know even included in the free version of bitrix so that's Really good. Uh, is there a limit to how many pages I can create? I think we said no, no limit on that either. Um, and follow up on that is, um, can I add e-commerce to to the site? I think that's a that's a feature that's coming soon. It's not available now, but it is it is coming because it was included in the product uh, launch uh, recently. So expect that expect that within the next couple of months certainly. Okay, so let's move on to the next section CRM uh, integration so we'll have a look at how we can integrate uh, chat widgets very very um, very very popular with uh, people these days um, chat widgets Bitrix has chat widgets pre-built chat widgets and you can integrate those and we're going to look at how you set that up on your Bitrix website um, Forms, same sort of thing. So, can you we had a brief look at that? How you do it from the front end, but how do you do it from the Bitrix side? How do you create those fields on those forms? Um, customize the fields for the data for the information you want to capture. Uh, callback requests are the same, same sort of thing. But there's, a, there's a certain way you need to configure that, and then we're just gonna have a look at lead automation as well. So, we're gonna have a look at um, once you've captured those inquiries on a form or a live chat or a callback request. How, how can you do some automation on those leads if you want to send auto responses and assign those leads to the right people within your organization? Okay, so let's jump back into Bitrix and let's first of all have a look at setting up the live chat. So if you go into the CRM and in fact if you go into open channels, sorry, let's first of all have a look at this. And then if we go into the live chat widget at the top, then you can see here that we can, we've already connected our live chat. You can connect it straight away. And then what you need to do is you just need to click on open channel preferences for live chat and we can configure. So currently we have a call, we have a uh, live chat queue of Max Smith and we can, and basically this is the person who answers the live chat and if somebody was to post a message from live chat from your website it will come through into Bitrix via the open channel chat widget. The point, point of having a queue here is that if Max Smith is not available uh, at that time if we've got more people then any one of these people can respond to that message so the key here is especially with live chat is to be responding within within seconds, really, uh, not minutes. Yeah, that's exactly it. And then what we can do is, based on the person who submitted the details by the live chat, we can check if they exist in the CRM. If not, we can create a new lead if we wanted to. We don't have to have it automatically create a new lead. We can manually set that. And then there are quite a lot of other settings in here. It's basically we can provide uh, they allow the customer to provide their feedback. We can specify the time, the working time that live chat is available for. And if you want this to display on your Bitrix 24 website, then you do need to configure and connect this up. So once you've done so, click on save and it will become available. Now, once you've done that, 
The second area that we'll look at is the CRM forms. So if you go to the CRM and go to, it's, it's under more on hours. And then if you go to CRM forms and with CRM forms, the great thing is that you can create an unlimited amount of forms. So if we were to click on add new form here, we can say that this is Bitrix site form. Give the form a title that your visitor is going to see. Give it a description again that your visitor is going to see. And we can pull in any of the, in this case, the leads field. So we might want our first name, our last name. So these are the standard fields that are available in a lead. If you can, of course, create custom fields. So it might be that you want to capture some information beyond the standard fields like name, telephone number, email address. If you create a custom field in the settings in the CRM, it will be available and it's to be displayed in this form as well. Yeah, and if you want to learn any more about that, we do have a CRM webinar uh, where, we, where we show you how to create those elements. And pretty much like, once you've set up your form, pretty much like the live chat, we can assign who the responsible person of this lead. So once this form is submitted, what we've got this to do is we've got save the form data to create a new lead. We can have it create a contact, we have it create a deal and a contact. We can put it into a deal pipeline, a quote or an invoice. The most common is a lead, especially on your big Bitrix 24 site. It's going to generate your new leads. And again, you can style it up however you wish. Now, the good thing is when you're creating a Bitrix 24 site is that the form is going to take the look of your website. So it's not going to look out of place at all. So once you've created your form, then a there's just you can create two types of form. This would be a standard form, but you can also here recreate a callback form as well. And what that will do is if you've got the phone number and you've got Bitrix telephony set up, then it will automatically dial back the customer on that form. So we've set up the live chat. We've set up our CRM forms. Now all we need to do is have a look at our website widgets and actually display these in a widget if we wanted to. So you can see here that we have a create widget button. Let's go into this that already exists on here. And you can see here that we have connected channels. We've got our live chat. We've got our CRM form. So this is, we can choose one of the forms that we've got available from our CRM. And we've also got the callback form as well. So this will display all the callback forms that are available. And what we're referring to is this widget. You can see on the right hand side, we've got it placed in the bottom right hand corner of the website. And what we are referring to is exactly this on our web, Bitrix 24 site. We have live chat. You can see here that it's pulling that chat live chat up. It's got our inquiry form that we've selected. And it's also got our callback form as well. So these are a really good way of integrating and a way of generating leads within your system. So it's like I say, we've already shown you how to attach CRM forms to the Bitrix 24 site. And in the site settings, we've also shown how you can embed your website widget. Yeah, so, that, so there's, a, there's a few thing, different things you need to do there to get those widgets working the way you want them to work. I think we went through it quite quickly, but it, it, it might look a bit confusing. It's not. You, I mean, you're essentially creating, um, you're, you're configuring your chat with options, and then you're creating your forms, and then you're creating your widget that, that allows you to the, the, the user to access those, those different options. So I think, you know, there's probably other videos on there on YouTube as well. We've certainly covered it in our CRM uh, webinar as well in probably a bit, a bit more detail. But uh, straightforward, no, no, doesn't require any complicated setup coding. It's all, all the tools are there pre-built for you. Yeah, and then I think finally, just have a look on it. And again, this is covered in a lot more detail in our CRM webinar. But Bitrix offer lead automation. So I've gone into a lead here in the CRM. Click onto the automation tab. What we can do is if you click on configure automation rules there in the top right hand corner. When a new lead comes in, whether it's been created from a live chat, whether it's been created from a CRM form or a website widget form, a new lead will come in. 
unassigned, we can then have it automate and automatically send an auto responder out email thanking them for their inquiry. And we ought to simply do that, click on add, client communications and send email. So we can see there, we can automatically send an email back out. And we can create a condition to see whether the source of this lead, so if it's come from live chat, what we could do is find the source field here, source and equals. And then what we could do, you can see we have some form names already set up. So maybe we have a website inquiry. Based on that form being submitted, you can send an email back. Yeah, on. so you're going to be capturing leads in lots of different lots of different ways, including just adding leads manually. And yeah, if you put these conditions in, then they're going to they're going to um, uh, the actions are going to be different depending on depending on the inquiry as well. Uh, and I think this is I think this is really good if you have uh, created a number of different Bitrix twenty four sites because mm -hmm. what you could have is you could have ten Bitrix twenty four sites. 10 different CRM forms, yeah. and you could have one automation process yeah. that checks each source of the form. Yeah, and different responses for different sites, but you, you'll see all your leads in one place, so you can see in total all the leads you've, you've generated for a period of time, and you can filter down by different sources. Another nice thing I think on here is um, you can bring in uh, things like their their names. So you might want to, when you, in your email, you might want to bring in the name of the person who's created this created this inquiry to the to, into the response but like i say i know we've only briefly touched upon the automation uh, rules behind the leads but please take a look at it is on uh, youtube and our in, uh, youtube channel take a look at our crm webinar because the automation is explained in, in a little bit more detail there okay see so if we've got any questions um can I create different live chat widgets for each site with different people? Um, so different people. So I guess when you say different people, you mean they're, they're going to be allocated to different responsible people. So different sales people might be looking after different channels um, for you. You certainly can um, create different widgets. So you might have a mini site that focuses on a particular sector that you, you work in, and you might have a sales guy that looks after that sector. He's, he or she's probably going to want to respond to those chats for that particular mini site. So you, you certainly can do that. Um, how can I define what sources are available um, in my leads? So I think we just go into um, I think we just go into the settings within the CRM, and you can create uh, within the settings within the CRM. You can you can look at lead sources. I think they're called lead yeah. sources, and you can create your own lead sources. I think Bitrix is shipped with some standard uh, default lead sources. You can change those provided you're an admin. You can change those within the settings within the CRM. Yeah, and I think when you create your own forms and you create the live chat, the sources are already there. So if you're creating a CRM form, it will automatically give the lead source as that form name once you've submitted it. Okay, you can have one site for free, but can you have multiple landing pages? Well, a landing page really is a site, so you can only have one one site. If you're on the free version, you can have one site or one landing page. You can't have more than one. They're the, essentially the same. Uh, landing page, although we just we just mentioned, you probably wouldn't have that indexed in Google. Um, Is the chatbot is the chatbot comments automated over time based on communication so far? Um, chatbot. Well, we haven't covered chatbots. I mean, Bitrix uh, has some integration with um, bots. I mean, we have we're able to integrate with some AI providers, um, but we haven't looked at chatbots. We've looked at chat tools. So that that is a tool where um, a person is responding manually to those those communication messages. They're not they're not bots in this instance. Okay, let's have a look then to finish up on reporting. So different ways we can do this. Of course, we mentioned uh, Google Analytics. I'm not going to look at that. Look at that. It's outside of the scope of this of this webinar, but that's you know that's the key area really. I think Andy showed you where to put your analytics code in when you're creating your site. That's uh, that's essential really. Um, that's very comprehensive. 
analytics package. Uh, Google has all the data. They know who's hitting your site. So that's the place to find out in detail what's going on with your website. But within Bittrex, we'll have a quick look at um, different areas that you can see, you know, some dashboards and some statistics within your Bittrex CRM. Yeah, so Bittrex comes shipped where we looked at the open channels where we're going to be setting up the the live chat and different areas like that. But we'll just briefly look at what comes with Bittrex in terms of the reporting. So you can see in terms of how many live chats have come in via your website. And you'll be able to see which site it's come from as well. You can see the average uh, reply time. The satisfaction rate is based on your on your live chat. You can have a once you finish your live chat, you can have feedback from your customers, give them a thumbs up and a rating mm -hmm. so you can see how satisfied they are about your live chat. And then you can see the different uh, inquiries based on here. So it's simple to configure and create your widgets in here. You can move them around and create your own dashboard. So that's the open channel statistics. Uh, and then we have quite a comprehensive reporting tool in the leaves. And again, it's something that we cover quite a lot in the CRM webinar. But if we go to leaves and then the, in the right hand corner here, we can see the number of active leads. We could create a widget here that told us what sources that the leads had come from. So we would just click on add report and we could then create a, maybe a, a columned uh, mm -hmm. widget that showed us six leads have come from website one, six, mm -hmm. ten leads have come from website two, and, and so yeah. on and so forth. Yeah. So we can really break down the number of leads. And the good thing is with those website forms and we're specifying different uh, people to be responsible for the leads that have been created, we can actually then create a report on the number of leads per sales representative representative so like i say we're only touching upon this it's a case of being again clicking on add report and you can create a series of different types in here they are quite visual if you're and these will be based on your crm permissions as well so if your sales agents uh, they'll only see their own leads and so they'll be able to see the number of active leads for themselves but a manager would be able to see a complete overview of all the leads on the system and what sources they come from. Yeah, it's just worth clicking into this here. Of course, you can see your leads as they come in and you can see, you can filter them by, you know, I might want to look at leads that are created on the current day. I might want to look at the ones that, that maybe I'm just, I'm responsible for. So, you know, it's a, it's a form of, form of reporting. Um, you, can see, you can see them in a list view like that, or you can see as your leads come in, if you want to, if you prefer to see them in something like a Kanban view, then you can do, you can do that as well. But yeah, like I say, I keep reiterating the point. This isn't basically a CRM uh, webinar. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. how you can integrate with your Bitrix with your uh, Bitrix 24 site. So let's see so if they've got any questions. Um, we have got some questions. How do I get Google Anal Analytics uh, code? So you, yeah, you need some code in order to import into the field we looked at earlier. I think if you just Google Google Analytics, then uh, if you haven't already got an account, it will. I think I think you can so you can create an account. Yeah, I think all it asks Bitrix twenty four sites. All it asks for is your uh, unique ID. So it begins with a UA, and then it'll give you a string of numbers and, and letters. Yeah. So you just need that. You don't need any code. Uh, you just basically plug in that ID and you'll be able to track the visits on your site. Yeah, are there any other ways I can create a more detailed report? So there is, uh, if within the CRM, within Bittrex, there is a, a reporting section which allows you to create custom reports. So if you wanted to see something specific or you want to see uh, something maybe less graphical, but you want to see a table of data, it shows you how many leads you created in a certain period and maybe the value they went on to, to generate, you can do that in the reporting tool. Uh, you can you can you can create custom or custom dashboards and things like that if you've got a self-hosted version of Bitrix as well. Some some better features there. Um, okay, um, that's it. In summary, um, all drag and drop, no coding required. Um, lots of uh, pre-built templates that work on um, are are optimized for multiple devices. Uh, integrate with uh, tools within Bitrix. 
uh, create many different calls to actions that will generate leads for you within Bittrex, um, and then and then either automate that or follow those up manually, and you can report on uh, in a number of different ways. A key way would be to in Google Analytics, but you can report on the number of leads if you're integrating and creating using forms. You can report on the number of leads generated from a website or a landing page uh, in the using the tools that we've we've looked at. Okay, that's it. So we have a webinar at the same time every week. We look at CRM in detail. We look at um, we look at the uh, project management. We have a look at um, HR, uh, all the tools built into Bitrix for managing HR. Uh, we have one webinar that focuses on processes, workflows and business processes. We've mentioned the self-hosted just briefly, but Bitrix is available as a cloud or a self-hosted product. Self-hosted has some additional uh, advantages and we, we focus on that on, on a, a particular webinar. And new webinar as well, telephony. Uh, now very popular within Bittrex. We look at how you set that up and what you can do with telephony. If you go to our website at intraface.com slash webinars, you can register. In addition to webinars, we have a live session, session every Thursday. Uh, no registration required for that. That's on YouTube at that address um, below. And that covers any topic. Ask any question. We'll answer any question you ask. Yeah, for the Bitrix 24 Live, it's at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on a Thursday. So if from now until Thursday you're having to play around with the Bitrix 24 sites and you're going to set it up, if you've got any questions with regards to your setting up of Bitrix 24 sites, then you can join us at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Thursday and we can help you with any issues that you may have. We can answer any questions that you may have with regards to the the site set up and we can show you on screen. That's what we do on Thursdays. So I think that's it. Thank you very much for your time and your questions. Uh, if you've got any questions after this, uh, please drop us an email to sales at Intraface, which is on the screen uh, there. And we'd be more than happy to help. Okay, thanks. Thank you.